Good morning, Chad Clovis. It's wonderful to be here again with you at PDOC and uh, to have the opportunity to talk about Carbon X, my favorite ESG carbon trading warrior platform. So when we met here last year, you had a lot of interesting initiatives coming, growth patterns. And I know from my own experience that your app for Carbon X has exploded. So give me the summary of how things have been this year. Well, it's been a whirlwind, that's for sure. This last year's went extremely fast. Um, very happy to be back here again, just talking with you. It's one of the funnest times that we have doing interviews is just chatting with Mel and the investor team. So uh, the last year has been amazing. We've ran the app from zero to over 17,000 downloads. Um, including me. Including, including Mel. <laughs> uh, and that's in less than eight months. So in eight months, we had 17,000 downloads, which is more than a lot of apps ever get. Uh, and that's global too. That's, that's global. not just like in the US or something. That's everywhere. Yeah, so the app's doing that. Drill Green, we've crested 40 clients now. So on the Drill Green initiative, junior mining, uh, offsetting exploration, extraction, and construction of mining, oil and gas, construction projects for road and uh, municipal maintenance. 40 clients. Uh, we've signed an airline. Uh, we've signed two global MSAs with major energy companies such as Drax and Shell Energy. And during those, we became a broker dealer uh, for Drax to be able to move some of their carbon offsets. And with Shell, we're working on a few initiatives where we can actually have a higher supply for our app and have a steady, complete uh, service line. So it's moved fast. <laughs> now, for our viewers who have not yet signed up for your app, but will after this interview, can you give them an idea of where that nexus is? Because you talk about carbon offsets for junior miners or majors. How does the app facilitate that? Uh, so the app for the junior miner side, yeah, we have a B2B and a B2C service. So a person can come on, sign up, offset their own footprint. It's social media shareable badges. We're influenced by different influencers such as MD Motivator. Uh, we've got a bunch of NHL players that are motivating for us, um, helping us kind of build like an ambassador service. And then on the B2B side, We've got a sign-up system where you can sign up and you can offset your employees. You had so many carbon offsets in the company name. You had to support a project and it helps to reduce your footprint on the app. Uh, it's very fiscally responsible. It's not expensive. It gets you a very good global recognition and it allows you to participate in our social media system. Uh, our social media system, we've got 50,000 followers on social now starting to push that up a lot. And we have a great big spring push coming out with the app. Um, with a bunch of really good press that's coming out next week. Um, it's gonna be interesting. Oh my, so more stay tuned stuff, yeah. huh? Yeah. So I gotta, I gotta ask you, because you're right in the throes of this battle. You know, you keep hearing all this stuff about, oh, ESG is on the ropes and companies aren't really committed anymore and et cetera. Um, I have my own views on that, but I'd love to hear yours. Yeah, so my views are, we can't be an all or nothing. That's what I'm always saying. It's, it's here, it's needed, it's now. There's two ways you can go about it. You can fight it or you can learn to work it. And I've always learned to work things. So um, I, I really believe in looking at what sets you apart from other companies. If this is another tool to set yourself apart, why fight it? Why not just embrace it, move forward? And it isn't an all or nothing aspect. Uh, environmentalists, they want it all today. Miners want it all today. And it's not what it is. So if we use the tools we have at our disposal right now to make things a little bit better until technology catches up and then we get caught up and we can be better. That's what this is all about. It's not about an all or nothing. It's about let's do what we can. And honestly, we need to change to keep things the same. If we don't change, things won't stay the same. They'll continue to slide. So if we change, we keep things the same. We start to adopt and move forward. It'll get better. Picking up on that sort of incremental thread, I mean, you made a reference to maybe working with Shell. Yeah. And of course, there are many environmentalists who pretty much would go, oh, no, not, not an oil company. So tell me about, about how that's working out. So Shell has some of the biggest carbon reduction projects in the world. Uh, they're one of the largest carbon credit and carbon project developers in the world. Uh, their system is unbelievable, how they have it set up, how they develop carbon offsets and the access to the market. So I was dealing with smaller brokers. I opened my own trading arm. So we have a small brokerage trading arm. We couldn't get the volume of offsets to be able to monetize for our, our clients. So what we did is we partnered with Shell. 
I got a global MSA with them to start trading carbon offsets, access their carbon offset inventory. And it allows me to actually take their offsets into our system, put them through our system, and then offer them to our clients. Um, it's just a good situation for us as a base point. As for Shell, I don't think anyone's ever gonna believe, no matter what you say, that they're, they are what they're doing. It's, just, it's Shell, it's the same as every company, tech, Rio, same thing. Even Drax, like Drax degrades. Drax is a great company, they do uh, power projects from biofuel and bio waste and they're they're under the microscope as well. So it's it's tough when you're a huge industry, it's a really tough thing to spin. Well, and it's also a matter of of uh, getting over history. Because I mean in all fairness, you know, particularly the large long-lived companies don't have a universally clean track record even factoring in that expectations were different 50 years ago or 100 years ago. So that's a hurdle that needs to be overcome as well. So for investors out there who may not be exactly sure what's even meant by carbon credits and carbon exchange, can you give a really quick little prissy? So the easiest way I explain a carbon offset is it's, it's a mechanism of change. So a carbon offset's a thousand kilograms of CO2, one metric ton of CO2 that's been removed or offset from the environment by a mechanism of change. If you plant 31 trees in Bolivia, that equals a carbon offset per year, which is a mechanism of change. Uh, they don't come from air, they don't come from fake. Uh, it has to be some kind of a mechanism that caused the change to make the offset. When it comes to trading, uh, carbon trading's hard. <laughs> it's extremely hard. Uh, when you're in a brokerage situation, you have multiple accounts, multiple lines, multiple uh, different types of carbon offsets and valuations for each one. And there's no real globalized pricing system. So it's, it's an extremely complicated system and that's where it comes to just getting the right people. And why hasn't the United Nations or another large international body tackled having a good system? Exactly. I've, I've asked that twice now. Uh, I was at the emissions conference in Geneva uh, nine months ago and I said like, are we going to be able to have a global pricing system, a global recognized like pricing trading platform? And it doesn't really look like it because most of the exchanges are regulated uh, federally, provincially, or by nonprofits. And then when you go to Africa, every country has their own kind of uh, stipulation that they want, their own type of framework. Same with South America. I don't think it's ever going to come together. But if it did, it would really make things simple for the rest of us. Game changer. Yeah, yeah. for sure. So looking ahead to this year, what are the big uh, milestones for Carbon X that we should be watching for? Yeah, so the big milestones for us this next six months, uh, we deployed our next biochar project. Uh, so it's on its way to Liberia, Africa right now. We've got uh, two big pots going out. Be doing roughly around 4,000 tons of biochar a year. Be operating in April. Uh, we've signed an MOU to do a municipal garbage, uh, municipal garbage to electricity uh, power plant in the Western Baltics where we're heading over in April to do the feed study and the MOU study to make sure that it's viable. And if it is viable, we're gonna move forward with a Topco and start doing a garbage to power plant system over there. Uh, our board, we completely reworked our board. Uh, a press announcement will come out tomorrow. Uh, we've got a very, very major uh, NHL Hall of Famer coming on our board. Uh, one of the best indigenous leaders that I know in Canada coming on our board. And uh, we've kind of staged ourselves to make the next steps. ASCII Carbon's up and running. We own that 51%, 49, uh, 49 to us. The 51 is split 34% to the MSDC, uh, the Métis Settlement Development Corporation, and the Asokan uh, Capital Corp. And the Asokan Capital Corp is an indigenous capital company. Uh, 51, 49, we're working on an indigenous compliance network with them. And we're also working on uh, actually a renewable infrastructure system that is in place owned by a major in Alberta that wants an indigenous group to take it over, manage the infrastructure and manage the carbon. So we're in the middle of that piece too, which will be a press announcement in about two weeks. Um, those ones are rolling good. We've got an expansion plan for September with our next biochar facility in Liberia as well. And the app, the app is actually going to go out for a spring fling is what we're calling it. Uh, it's a big push. We've kind of worked out some influencer arrangements and some big things like that. And then the only other piece that's big for us is uh, we're actually going to be offsetting a few of the ATP tennis tours events this year. 
So we're going to do a little event with them, uh, calculate everything out, check out everything, do a monetization offset, and then we're going to do a community support project in the place where we do the offset. Wow. So busy year, lots of great stuff coming up for CarbonX and for the planet. Well, I may not be an influencer, but I'm sure a fan. Keep up the good work, Chad. It was great talking with yeah, you. Yeah, thank you very much, Mel. Have a great day. Thanks.